the wacky world of Multimedia J. What up, YouTube? This is Multimedia J here. <laughs> No, I can't be doing pastiches of, uh, for this sort of stuff. Sorry, I just... <laughs> no pastiche. Anyways, there's an element of pastichery going on today because this video is going to be inspired by a, a uh, over-the-shoulder demonstration video of this device by the man 7431 He's a very mellow commentator. I gotta check out more of his videos. I recently subscribed to him after... Uh, playing his video a couple of times. Sometimes, you know, help me fall asleep and stuff because he's so relaxed. He's like... Anyways, so he did a 33 minute video about one of these things and I posted it on Facebook and my dad's like, a 33 minute video about a washing machine? Lol. I'm like, it's YouTube. People make videos about everything and put it on that darn site. Of course, uh, my dad might be a little biased. After all, he's still using AOL dial-up. It's only ten bucks a month! <laughs> uh, let's not revisit that argument, please. Plus, I'm not feeling well. Uh, anyways. So this is the Magic Chef 2.1 cubic foot portable washing machine. A uh, strategic move on my part with the move and whatnot and the absolute shoal we went through trying to get my full-sized washing machine out of the basement at the last place. And, and it, it was basically a, a refurb from the early 90s. So it was a total rust bucket, not worth bringing up here, and I didn't want to finish running into the ground here. Plus, washer and dryer technology has advanced since the last time, uh, since uh, the days of that, those refurbs. This is not a refurb, this is brand new. It's a 2.1 cubic foot portable washer, so it's got two wheels in the back, so it essentially has its own appliance dolly. It has no trouble fitting through the doors, and I could probably squeeze this into the back seat of my car if I wanted to. And take it somewhere. If, say, the Geek House turns out to be a dud, home-wise, I could always take this with me, and if my next apartment were to not have hookups, this thing in a pinch will hook up to a sink. Matt, <coughs> excuse me. Matter of fact, there I go with the videos after supper thing again. Ma um, matter of fact, this thing has an annoying habit of always defaulting to cold water because it's portable. So what'll happen is, if I go to turn it on, it assumes that I want to use cold water right off the bat every single time, even if I want to do warm water washes. And even if I have real hookups, like here, that's a hot and a cold, one side's hot, the other is cold. Bravissimo. <laughs> Uh, so, it, because it's made to hook up to a sink, it assumes that you always want to, you, you're always using it in a sink. I actually have a real setup here, so I get to do that, and the spigot's already turned on. So, anyways, I don't want this video to be as drony as the man's. Well, not drony, but as you know, real mellow and relaxed. I want it to be more to the point, and also show the general setup that I'm using for laundry in the geek house in general. Uh, for this sort of thing. So let's take a look at what we have to play with here. Now as you just seen, everything is blue, whereas the man's one, maybe it was from like a year or two ago, everything was red on his, but I like the blue. When you turn off the lights when you're doing some laundry, it has this nice blue glow. Or maybe I'm just biased, because glowing blue stuff reminds me of the movie Tron, <laughs> and I'm a nerd, so whatever. Because it's a portable, the last part of the thing does flip down. I traditionally just open it like this because it kind of wants to do that when you open it up. But you, if you're used to a full-size washing machine, you can always just do this with it. But I, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, it just it does that because in case you have like tight space and stuff like that, you can do that. Got a load of laundry in here, mostly a work jacket that's gotten some splotches of cleaning chemicals. Hope I didn't ruin the jacket using it to clean out the old apartment the other day. And you got <clears throat> you got wash, rinse, and spin. A little bit of dried-on fabric, uh, uh, dish dish soap, uh, laundry soap there. Using <clears throat> liquid stuff from Aldi. And the fabric softener is going to be from Walmart. 
So you have functions, load size. I just leave it on large because this this no agitator design has some sensors that seems to stop the water early if I don't put a lot of stuff in there. It kind of reminds me of those high efficiency washers, but I don't see an official high efficiency tag, so I'm still using regular detergent and stuff like that. Delay, I don't know why you'd want to delay washing your clothes. Um, do you really want to like set up, oh, I'm gonna go off to work for eight hours and I want to hear the washing machine fire up when I get home. No, I want to have the clothes wash while I'm, well, if by chance you want to delay everything. Cha-ching! Now program, the way this works is solid means the one on the left and blinking means the one on the right. So we have heavy soil, which is like, oh man, these are my work clothes. They're gritty and grimy and bleh. So, uh, quick wash is 10 minutes, which it's not, I've read up these quick modes are designed for like two or three items or something. So I never use that because I wait for a full load, stuff like that. A special jeans mode, anti-wrinkle mode I haven't tried yet. I'm just gonna use normal mode for this one. And then the last mode is air dry, which is literally nothing but the spin dry for an hour. I tried that and it depends on the humidity and other stuff too. It's basically this thing's attempt to be a dryer and uh, the man liked it, but I'm not so keen on it because number one, first of all, this is a little something that may sound laundry-ish, but I use the term when it's, when we're talking computers, there's a little something called duty cycle, which is out of the time that the device takes wear and tear, how much of that time that is taking wear and tear is due to, is, is, consists of the device doing what you bought it for? Like in the case of, for example, uh, Blu-ray drives in computers. I could use a Blu-ray drive to play DVDs and stuff, but I'm putting wear and tear on the motor. And if I'm paying extra for a Blu-ray drive, I want the majority of the time that I'm putting wear and tear on the device to be used for watching Blu-ray movies, which is why I'm still watching Blu-ray computer side on a plug-in drive that I built back in 2010 that still works. <laughs> so instead of just putting two blue, two BDR drives in the system, I just have a dedicated Blu-ray drive because I'm running that one into the ground. So likewise with this device right here. If I want to use this to wash clothes. The majority of the time that I want to put wear and tear on the motor and put it that much closer to needing to be repaired or replaced, I want it to be spent washing clothes. Plus, the spin dry mode, as I've found in recent weeks, can be pretty much replaced by a big patent floor fan and two drying racks that'll cost significantly less to replace than this $350 Walmart special. So we look inside, hidden down there somewhere is that lint filter, but if you saw the last vlog, you've already seen it. This thing does have a lint filter. It doesn't collect much compared to what you find in a dryer. This thing I think is for laundry powder, although I'm an idiot that uses it with liquid soap. Because I don't have a dryer, I'm also going to be using liquid fabric softener, which is something I've been getting used to. So yay, a downy ball with Walmart crap in it for softener. Last go around, it didn't, uh, it didn't spit out all the stuff all the way, so I'm going to put it in on its side and hope it rattles around a little more. All right, let's load this up with soap and start the uh, cycle here. Okay, it looks like slime from a horror movie because I think that soap holder thingy is made for powder instead of uh, liquid here. Large, uh, we'll do the regular, we'll do regular mode here and you just push the start button. And it should be going, getting going in a second now. All right, and there goes the water mixing in with the remaining amount of the soap. That's gonna fill up. I think there's sensors in the basin that detect when it's hit the top because for smaller loads when I don't fill the basin, I notice it starts whipping the clothes around without filling the whole thing up with water. So I think there's some elements of high efficiency stuff in here without it actually being a high efficiency device. And of course I'm using cold water. Of course it defaulted to cold water, so I'm using cold water again. Not a good thing actually, but um, that jacket has to be washed in cold water, so that's why I'm doing it this time. Otherwise I'd have to push warm, or push the button to put it up to warm. Of course when you use this with a sink, it all comes in through the cold water uh, intake and you just adjust the temperature with your faucet. That's the way these portables usually work. Now this thing's pretty computerized compared to the hunk of junk I had at the last place. Because if I dare to lift this cover... Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> E2. It's like an error at a baseball game or something. But it's actually an error code. Just close the lid and it starts back up again. There's other errors too, like if the load's unbalanced. 
If I don't want the thing belly aching at me when I open the lid, just pause it. It stops what it's doing, and I can just do this. I'm actually going to error this out on purpose because I want to clean out the, uh, the soap cup here. So, let's see if I can do this with a camera. Okay, continue. And three, two, one. Fast as fast can be. <laughs> You'll never catch me. <laughs> I better knock it off. That reference is probably going to date me. All right, time to fill that sucker up with water. Now, unlike the 33-minute demo video that the man did, I am actually going to wait until it starts spinning things around. So here's basically what it looks like. When you first put it together, there's also a uh, anti-noise plate that you can put on this too. So if you're in an apartment situation and you don't want your downstairs neighbor to hear or whatever, then uh, you could always do that. Or put a rubber mat under it or something to muffle the sound. I imagine floor vibrations would be your biggest concern with this thing. Although it does have an air vent under there, so when the fabric softener starts dispensing, it's going to make the place smell really nice. It looks like I splashed some water on there. Yeah, It's a washing machine. You've probably seen this before. Especially if you have a high efficiency one, because that's how this thing works due to its lack of an agitator. So, uh, oh, oh, it's still a little hot because it has pilot lights. There's the downy ball, ready to get whipped around once this thing finishes filling. Um, let me turn the water up a little. I don't know, that's as much as it can take in. It can all starve the device as well by turning off the spigot. It actually errors out if not enough water, if the water hasn't risen high enough after X amount of time, so... The manual has so much stuff in it. I mean, this thing is so computerized compared to... Oh, here we go! There, and this is basically the main attraction right here. Just spin back and forth, spin back and forth, and it does this for all the cycles, including the so-called heavy soil mode. No agitator, so it uses the friction of the clothes to try and wash everything off. Well, the good news is, though, it might be a little easier in some respects if you've ever had an agitator tear up something like, you know, um, well, a flimsy piece of clothing. <laughs> And that's basically what you get. Um, back and forth, back and forth, and it's just going to whip everything around. You're going to hear the downy ball knocking around there, probably releasing its stuff a little too early this time, but eh, what are you going to do? The place is going to start smelling nice once the fabric softener starts going. I think there's a soak phase where everything just stops and it sits there. And then the rinse phase will bring in some more water, and then there's a little bit of spin dry at the end when it really, really spins. I mean, the spin dry on this thing is actually faster than the spin dry on my last thing. So we back the camera away. This is what you hear as the clock ticks down on this thing. That's basically it. Now, if you have paper-thin walls in an apartment situation, I don't know how much floor vibration we're talking about here, but it does have an adjustable foot on the bottom to help it be more properly balanced and properly anchored to the floor, or put the rubber side down, so to speak, so it's not rattling <coughs> or vibrating any more than absolutely necessary. And for comparison, this is what I hear as I'm doing whatever over on the computer while the laundry is going in the combo kitchen laundry room. Everything has stopped. I haven't pushed the pause button or anything. It's literally just doing the soaking part of it now. Eventually everything's gonna fire back up again. I should probably mention that much like the man, no, not, I'm not, I don't mean to relate to his video so many times, but I'll put a link in the description. Much like the man, I actually bought this from Walmart.com as a holiday special, about 300 something and change, which isn't all that bad. And uh, the big thing with Walmart is that they put an extra layer of cardboard over it, so they didn't just ship it in the retail package. So there were cardboard inserts and then an additional huge ass box over the top. I think they might have 3 pl this because there's some kind of appliance something or another on the box, but um, it's obviously a bulk item, it's big. And uh, the good news is they were able to give me free shipping on it, and the FedEx guy brought it right up here. Didn't even, I raced home from work in case I had to sign for it, but uh, and they would have just left it. Of course, it would have been a back-breaking type thing for someone to try to steal anyways. <laughs> they didn't have a truck, but I, I like that they sent it because there was a little bit of ding, a little bit of dingage, so to speak, 
when I looked on the underside and stuff, there were some spots that had some cracks and things like that, but it was inconsequential to the operation of the unit, so I said, heck with it. <laughs> but it probably would have been in worse condition had they it been shipped in the retail packaging. Walmart put in cardboard inserts, or at least their 3 pl did, third-party logistics for those of you that don't speak warehouse ease. They uh, put in their... Uh, they put in uh, an extra cardboard inserts and a whole other huge ass box on top of the existing box. And then I just uh, slid it in through the door with some furniture sliders. The good news is now this thing's out of the box, it has two wheels in the back, and uh, I can just pretend it's on a dolly. Just tilt it up a bit and start wheeling it around. So I don't know when this is going to start doing stuff again, it's kind of doing the soak phase right now, but eventually there will be some more activity. While we continue waiting for it to come out of soak mode, I should probably mention down in the back there's a little thing you can unscrew. If, say, you have, like, change in your pockets or something, and it makes its way into the machine, it's gonna find its way down to this, to a little collector thing before it goes up to the wastewater hose that goes out through whatever you have for laundry and whatnot. So you can also arc this over a sink and send it down your sink drain or bathtub or whatever, but... I shut off the water and... Oh, there it goes again. It's back to washing again. I shut off the water and the power every single time, and the instruction manual recommends that sort of thing. So, uh, probably because it's a portable. So... But if you go down behind it and you unscrew that thing, you are going to get water coming out the back. So either have a basin to drain it into, or take the lid from a tote. There shouldn't be at more than, you know, a little bit of water in there that'll leak out into the tote. You know how, like, the Rubbermaid totes, they have the sides that come up on the lids? You can just wheel this on top of one of those lids and then take the side off of the draining water. Hopefully it doesn't spill over. Well, if you, you shouldn't be running these types of things in carpeted rooms anyway, so... Um, hopefully the spillage that you encounter with retrieving your loose change and whatnot is at a minimum. <laughs> But yes, there's kind of like a little solid items trap before the hose goes up and out, so... We're the post-soak of the wash cycle right now, and as you can see, socks and underwear have floated to the top. So this thing's whipped some things around that stuff's not only going side by side, but also up and down as well. If you remember when I started, the jacket was on top. So this is the drying setup that we're rolling with. Two drying racks from Target and a giant Patton fan. I can actually blow on them and I can actually blow on the drying racks in low mode. Basically to create my own indoor breezy day and uh, maybe be a cheap ass and not have to get a portable dryer. The jury's still out on how well this works with, um, with uh, jeans, which take the longest to dry. But I figure, you know, I took like an hour and 15 minutes to dry stuff with the old dryer. See how this does in comparison with only a fan on low mode running off 120, just blowing on some drying racks. So, two is the magic number for me to do a decent chunk of laundry. Uh, you'll know stuff is dry when it starts flying off, or sometimes you have to flip a few things over or move a few things around. If I'm drying really big stuff, like blankets and sheets and stuff like that, I was washing some bed sheets earlier, I can actually switch some things around. I can actually switch some things around and go parallel instead of perpendicular. It actually works out pretty well. I'm going to go perpendicular because nothing's really big. That way, hopefully, the wind can be centralized on the racks. Although I might spread the racks out a bit so, the, so that the uh, shirt-type stuff has room to breathe, so to speak. This entire drying setup, by the way, is right in front of the furnace, but not close enough to create any kind of fire hazard. Certainly don't need any of that nonsense happening. Still in the wash cycle, we've stopped and started about three times now, so between wash, soak, wash, soak, etc. I should probably mention, I'm using the normal program instead of the heavy soil program, because I tried heavy once and it actually ripped one of my shirts. So, you know, you don't want to whip things around too much if your clothes don't get all dirty. But normal actually works a okay for me. Since I've been in the geek house, I've actually wanted to do laundry in this thing. <laughs> because I like the smell of the fabric softener. Plus, you get stuff from the old place that still smells like the old lady's cigarettes downstairs. Yeah, uh, I just wash it again just cause. Have it come out smelling like fabric softener instead of whatever lurked into my closets back in those days. <sighs> back in those days, that was less than a month ago. What am I doing? <laughs> 
Actually, I posted that on Facebook that I like the smell of, well, might as well just, well, it's gonna be hard because you gotta switch hands and do some other switching around and stare at the overkill extension cord. I'm using this Great Value Spring Showers rubbish that was on sale at Walmart a couple of weeks ago. And, da and I posted on Facebook that I like the smell of this stuff, especially when I was doing multiple loads of laundry and this thing on spin dry mode starts just spitting out the, the, you know, the smell of that stuff out the air vent and it goes all around the house. My dad was like, doesn't fabric softener smell awesome? Lol. He's talking like, you know, I haven't lived on my own for over a decade here and, and even more if you include college. I know a few things about cleaning stuff. Matter of fact, one of the things I love about this geek house is that it's easier to clean. I can see when stuff needs to be cleaned a lot more easily. Like that cobweb up there. Yeah! <laughs> I gotta get the rest of my cleaning equipment from the old place, but with the shiny clear coat -y paint and all kinds of other stuff, it's, and not only that, but with hard floors instead of a carpet, my old dust mop stick vac thingy does all the vacuuming. A-OK, -okay. I might not even need my upright anymore. It's like college all over again. Crappy little $20 stick vac does the trick. Oh, now we're kind of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We're getting to the end of the wash cycle. Eventually this thing will start making some different noises and then it'll load itself up with water to do basically this but with no soap. Oh, there it goes. And that's kind of the draining noise that you get as stuff drains out. We're kind of 50-50 between... Howdy, folks. We're kind of... I probably should have wore the sunglasses now. <laughs> We're kind of 50-50 between uh, whites and uh, shirts and stuff, so... Anywho. This is the end of the wash cycle. It's getting ready to start rinsing, so it's going to get all the soapy water out. It's going to... This thing's going to start making drainy type noises. Now, the way this works is it starts as the pump gets going and kind of ramps up. You start out with a little bit of water going out and then eventually you start getting a lot of it. So, of course I have, you know, just a big pipe with a trap coming out of the floor so I just jam the hose in there. If you use a sink though, just make sure you don't have like a slow drain or cooking grease down the pipes or something nutty like that, so. All right, so it's draining everything out. Next up is probably going to fill its... It is probably going to fill itself back up with water. There. <sighs> In order to do the rinse cycle. Basically, it's going to be a wash cycle with no soap. Hopefully, there's still some fabric softener left in that downy ball. I've been trying to get the timing just right on when it releases its stuff. Um, I have reason to believe that the downy balls were made for traditional washing machines that don't whip clothes around as much, so I'm really trying to fine-tune the whole downy ball thing. Or maybe I should just break down and get a portable dryer and shoot it out the bathroom window. Now it's making more windy type noise. When it starts to spin dry, it usually makes this noise, but we're still in the rinse cycle. So that's probably it kind of airing itself out, drying off the hook. What the? Interesting. Oh, so it's going to spin the clothes a little. I've seen it add water in after the fact, or maybe that was only on the heavy cycle. Well, this isn't full speed. It's going to really sound like, you know, a spaceship taking off or a plane taking off when it really gets up to full speed. This is probably about three-quarter speed right here. I'm going to go... There we go, there we go. Is it doing, it's got to be doing a pre-rinse spin or something. This is not full speed. Well, the man did a 33 minute video about a washer. I, I might be pushing it without... <laughs> I might push his uh, video length limit at the rate I'm going. Faster and faster. Aw, oh, yeah. Still on spin dry mode, but now the device is starting to uh, shake a little. I don't think it's going full speed. Nope, hey, this is part of the rinse, apparently. It's probably going to stop itself at some point, fill up with water, and do a little more back and forth after this initial spin. Now, this is not full speed. This is not the spin cycle. The spin cycle is even faster than this. 
Ah, computers. Go figure. All right, we're slowing down now, which means we're definitely not in the spin cycle. Let me guess. It's going to slowly sl come to a stop and then fill itself back up with water and then do some more rinsing. Spin dry would have been way faster than what we've just seen. And this thing still has 17 minutes to go. All right, hit the brakes on itself. And now, still in the rinse cycle. Yep, there comes some water. Now it's basically what it's gonna do what it did with the wash, except with water only and no soap. And some of the water with the soap in it kind of spun out of the close. Although that wasn't full speed like the spin cycle. The interesting part now is that the clothes don't go up as high as they did at the beginning because they've been spun once. Watch, this isn't going to fill as much, and when it does the back and forth thing as part of the rinse cycle, the water level will not be as high. Did I call it or did I call it a much lower water level? Matter of fact, this might be a little bit off. It might be just a tad off. I think if it senses that maybe it's spun everything up to the side and it levels everything out, it'll stop to add more water. There's a lot more computer stuff going on in this thing than the refurb I ran into the ground at the last place, that's for sure. I can smell that fabric softener. Oh yeah, I can really smell the fabric softener now. We're now only jerking back and forth a little. This time with far less water at the end of the rinse cycle. 11 minutes to go on the timer. Spin dry is next, and you will see very quickly. Oh, there it goes. There goes the water. Now you can see exactly what I was talking about with the speed of this thing. Oh boy, this is going to be another long cut. <laughs> but I want you to see this thing go from a dead stop all the way up to full speed ahead. Because one of the things about the high efficiency stuff is it does a faster spin dry than it does a faster spin dry than traditional washers with agitators. Now, if I take off my uh, loafers that I wear around the house, I can definitely feel some floor vibration just from emptying out the basin. Never mind what's about to happen when this thing spins up to full speed. So this is the part that you'd want to be concerned about if you have downstairs neighbors and where you position this thing and when you do your laundry because this is where the vibration is going to come from that might cause issues with them. So there's the that thing that gets gurgly noises with its bitty bitty hose that's small enough to drape over a sink, that's what this is. I think this clamps to something. I haven't really, or this thing clamps to something, I haven't really seen. I don't know why the previous tenants put tin foil on this, but alright, we gotta spin this sucker up or what? This is another one long take type thing. Almost ready to start. Hey, there's the lint filter. We can see it now. <laughs> now that it has, uh, now the clothes pile is a lot smaller than it used to be. Here we go. Talking about this like we're getting on the ride at an amusement park. Here we go, into the spin cycle. 10 minutes left, spin, all right. Still got a lot of water in it, so it's not going to go too fast. But just you wait till some of that water gets spun out of the clothes. Faster and faster! Ah, yeah! Maybe it won't spin as fast if it thinks the load's a little less. Uh oh. Oh, here we go. Now it's starting to make their <laughs> noises. This is more in. Okay, here we go. Now, if you run spin dry mode, it'll do this for an hour. So, looks like it's going to speed limit itself because the load's not too balanced. But I have seen it spin faster than this. It makes me wonder what would happen if Aussie 50 did a washing machine destruction video took one of these things and bypassed all the safety stuff on it and then just spun it until the thing spun itself to pieces or threw in a bowling ball or something like that to put it off balance on purpose. 
if you've ever seen any of Aussie 50's washing machine destruction videos, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, this thing is definitely speed limiting itself because the load's not as balanced as it could be. So, nuts. It can spin faster than this. We'll put something in spin dry mode just for the heck of it when it's finished. Eight minutes to go. We've reached the two minute warning here as this thing has most definitely speed limited itself because of how much this thing's rattling. Lots of computery stuff here. Once I start everything on the uh, dryer assembly, so to speak, uh, the drying assembly, I should say, I will pick probably an item to put in spin dry mode. Oh, now it's making a different noise. It's not rattling the floor as much. Yeah, this vibration would be something that wouldn't go over well with downstairs neighbors. Is it slowly spinning to a stop? I think what we're looking at here is a long, slow break. And this is the point where we're going to... There we go! Or maybe not. There's still a minute left on the timer. There it goes. And just like a microwave, it goes beep, beep, beep when it's done. Alright, let's pick something to put into spin dry mode. Okay, the drying process has started at 9.30. Could always leave it running overnight, but I went perpendicular with a little bit of space for the drying rack setup, and then of course we have the, uh, the fan going as well. Now, let's try the spin dry mode with uh, one piece of clothing and just show you how fast this thing can get. We'll use my classic Hawaiian shirt as an example of this sort of thing. Now, notice that no water has got to enter this thing, and uh, it's the only 60-minute mode on the entire machine. So, no water. It has a single spin cycle for an hour. Let's see how fast it gets. There we go. That's more like it. This is where it's going to go As long as it doesn't get too wobbly or off balance. That's the kind of speeds we're talking about here. It has a very uh, unique sound when you're trying to do other stuff. Either way, I'm not really interested in uh, putting some extra wear and tear on the motor tonight. Stop! See how quickly it hits the brake, and then just shut it off. Put this in the drying rack with everything else. One thing of note, after all of that laundry, we came out with uh, just a little bit of blue lint. Maybe from the shirt or something like that. That's what the lint filter managed to pick up. Okay, done with the machine. The cord is back where it belongs, and the water is shut off. As it should be. Now, let's see what we're looking at in terms of drying time on this stuff. Uh, huh, huh, huh. Yeah, I definitely caught a cold of some sort when walking in the rain instead of trying to drive around town the other day. Oops! Right in time for Christmas. This is why I have no luck. These dried, though, and uh, I think parallel works better than perpendicular, so I'll probably be doing more parallel setups, because all that really matters is that the air moves near the clothes, not necessarily how much. So, these dried, I think I'm still using a little too much fabric softener. Probably place the order for the compact dryer next week, just to uh, get back to something I'm more familiar with. Alright, it's enough laundry videos for now, although there was a little bit of technology in the washing machine. Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.